Hey guys, Wave618 here. It is the 18th of November 2019. Very excited to be doing today's video for you. It looks like Bitcoin is currently sitting at a very, very pivotal position. When I say pivotal, I mean we're on the verge of determining the fate for Bitcoin's price throughout 2020. So yeah, in my opinion, Bitcoin, if it is going to be bullish throughout 2020, it needs to start moving now, literally now. Uh, I'm going to justify the reasoning for that in this video and I'm going to show you the alternative scenarios that I can see for Bitcoin. Essentially, we have a bullish view, a bearish view and an intermediate view. Uh, and we're going to go through each one of them. It's going to involve looking at price from the Genesis from 2010 onwards. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a pretty detailed video explaining all my thoughts on Bitcoin at this moment in time. So if interested, stay tuned. guys hope you're all doing well so let's get started obviously big talking point at this moment in time is obviously on the shorter time frame we've seen this big spike here in price it came in on very nice volume and we've seen nice um, descending price action in the form of what looked like a bull flag for a good while but you know what it's gone on quite a while we keep seeing this meme across Twitter of this being a, a descending wedge yeah which is pretty much as you can see coming it to its termination and it's gonna to have to decide which way it's gonna go um, but yeah I mean I think that's pretty primitive analysis just looking at patterns like that and I'm gonna really elaborate on a lot of other indicators to try and determine where price is going as you know, I don't just look for patterns like this. I really like to look at the price action within such patterns um, to try and determine where we can expect price to go. But yeah, as I say, we need to, before we determine what's gonna happen here and the significance of what happens at this point, we need to look at Bitcoin from the very beginning. So I've done that before. I've explained it to my group. I've explained it on YouTube even. And uh, but I'm going to try and summarize things up in this video also. All right, so let's just pull up the what we're going to look at. We're going to look at the BLX chart because that has the most data for Bitcoin. So it's uh, the Brave New Coin uh, data. So if we just pull up the weekly time frame now, I want to show you my long term count because a few Elliott Wave and analysts they have a different count and I'm going to justify why I've got the count that I'm using so basically the way I have it is this being our our first wave second wave third wave fourth wave fifth wave so this is our one wave up to here this is our second wave third wave and we're basically in a fourth wave now and what I've been saying is that the fourth wave is not over it didn't finish here it's going to be a lot longer a lot more drawn out and I've been talking about the possibility of an ascending triangle. Now, before we go on to that, let me just explain this count because the main ambiguity comes in when determining, I think, this bit of price action here. So here, looking at it, we don't forget we're on the log scale here. It looks a little bit distorted. You know, the first wave looks very big, but you've got to remember we're on the log scale, okay? So let's go on the linear scale and we can see here so the first wave, first, so basically Bitcoin will always move in these parabolic moves. It goes up and then it retraces very deep. No matter whether it's a wave two or a wave four, whenever it goes up in a parabolic fashion, it's gonna have a deep retracement, okay? So this is our wave one, our wave two. Our next parabolic price action, wave three, and then we come down in a wave four. You can see wave four does not overlap with wave one. And then we get our final parabolic move before a, l a longer, much more drawn out correction. Okay, so for me, there's only one way to label this and that's one, two, three, four, five. Then you get your longer drawn out correction. Why? Because you're correcting the whole thing. Okay, so for me, this is our major wave one. This is our major wave two. From there, we go flying upwards to make our wave three. And if we pull up the wave, sorry, the log scale, that's basically, 
basically how I'm counting this. So I've got this on major wave one. So as I say, it's a lot more clear on the linear scale. And then this is our wave two, this is our wave three. And basically what we're seeing now is a wave four, which I just think is gonna be a lot more prolonged. I do not think it finished here. Uh, I'll elaborate, elaborate on why I don't think that in a moment. But the ambiguity comes in, as I say, when labeling this bit. There are people out there who will be looking at this just off the log scale and be calling this a one, two, um, so one, two, three, up to here, four, this is the fifth wave, and then they believe that we're correcting the whole thing, okay? So I don't, I don't believe that, because if that were the case, this would be a wave one, this would be our two, your three here, your four here, and your five there. Now the problem comes when labeling your third wave. To me, I can see a nice one, two, three, four, five waves up to here, yeah? So that's a completion of an impulse there. And then, so I can't see a five wave count for this third wave, that is the issue. You basically, by labeling it this way, you're eliminating the idea of, look, you're basically eliminating the idea of this being a significant wave. It clearly goes up once, down, and then we go up again. It's three wave-ish. So for me, the only way of labeling it is really, as I say, three, four, five. So this is our major wave one, this is our major wave two, this is three, and this is four. Okay, so that's all I want to explain, first of all, to justify why I'm looking at this as a major wave four. Okay, now what, do, what can we expect in wave four? First of all, it's a long drawn out correction typically let's not forget we've the 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 wave leading up to it was this major wave three so this is wave one two three okay so the three started here okay and it was a very large extended wave so we can expect a long drawn out correction now <clears throat> first of all we can put on a fib time perspective so if we look at the duration of the wave three so far, we've reached the 0.618 of that wave three, and I do think we're probably gonna come and test the one-to-one -one relationship. And that sits at around November 2020, okay? So I do think that's probably how long the correction is gonna last, okay? Up until November 2020, which pretty much coincides with the US election also, all right? Okay, so that is basically what I'm looking at. Now, how is the wave four gonna play out? Now, there's various ways it can play out. So I've, I've basically recently been talking about it being an ascending triangle. So with an ascending triangle, we can expect it to look like this. Okay, so these would be the boundaries of the triangle. And then just to label it, A, B, C, D and E, okay? So what I've been talking about is that this could be our wave A, our B wave is half complete, so we've had the first three waves up, we've corrected the first three waves, and then we're gonna see another leg up, okay? To form the completion of the B wave of the ascending triangle. Now my argument, which I'll explain in a, min in a minute on the bit stamp chart, is that if, th if that is gonna play out, it needs to start moving up right now, literally right now, otherwise it could turn out to be possibly a symmetrical triangle, which I'll explain in a moment, or a WXY, which is an even more bearish view. So first of all, this is the ascending triangle, okay? So this is the count that I've been looking at. It's the more bullish view here that I've got for Bitcoin, okay? And as I say, it needs to start moving. I'll explain that in more detail when we look at Bitstamp. But the next scenario is that we're forming a symmetrical triangle which could look something like this, which basically says that the B wave is in. We're coming down to make the C. Then we see a D and an E before we start moving higher. Okay, so that's the symmetrical triangle. Okay, so I'll be very happy for a wave four to play out like that. And then after that, we get our bearish outlook. Um, well, obviously this is pretty bearish in the sense that it's gonna come down to make a C wave. 
um, but there's a more bearish outlook. So let's just take a look at that because they're all very possible counts. So the more bearish outlook is that we see simply a W, that's our three waves down, X wave, complete, and then we come down to see our Y wave, which comes down further. Now let's not forget, with this being wave four, it can't overlap with wave one, which wave one finished here, so that was at around uh, 1100, so we can't come down that far. And in terms of determining how far it would come down, you know I like to look at pitchforks, so if we just pull on this pitchfork, so this is a shift pitchfork, first pivot, second pivot, third pivot, I'd be looking probably for the lower median line to get tested, and there is a good one-to-one -one relationship between W and Y at around 2,200. So I'd be looking for a potential, if we did see a WXY, I'd be looking for a move to around that level, okay? And you can see that does this level does eat into this consolidation here, which could act as support. So that is the WXY scenario. So there's three scenarios. There's the ascending triangle, and if that's going to happen, it needs to start moving up to complete its B wave, and it needs to start moving up straight away. The intermediate count is that we're going to see a symmetrical triangle, where it means that the A wave is finished, B wave is finished, we're in our C wave, which would probably come down test this horizontal range at around 5800, maybe even wick below to around 5500, before then going to form the D wave up. Okay, um, so yeah, and then the final, the more bearish scenario is this WXY. Now at the moment, I don't have a preference over either one. All I'm saying at this moment, there is a setup for the ascending triangle and it needs to hold, it needs to start, if it's gonna occur, it needs to start happening now. <clears throat> now I know a lot of you will have doubts that this is a corrective move. Okay, so I'm gonna to have to elaborate on that because I know if you're watching my video for the first time, you're gonna be saying, how on earth can this be corrective, okay? But first of all, this is my, I just wanna show you the three counts that I'm looking at from a long-term perspective. I've basically wanted to justify why I'm looking at this as a, a wave four that we're still within. And um, yeah, the three potential scenarios. Now we can move on to the bitstamp chart. So let's just pull a bitstamp, so, okay. So next thing to explain is how I see this as corrective. I've got it as an ABC. We'll zoom in on this now. So basically the way I'm looking at it, in fact, let's just go on the four hourly. So obviously this looks very impulsive coming up. Then I'm calling this an ascending triangle to form our B wave. So we've got an A, B, C, D, and E to here. And then we have our five waves up. So we've got a one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so A, B, C. And the thing I like about it is, first of all, this pitchfork, which I'll explain in a moment. But if we look at the fib relationship between the A and the C, so that's A, extend it from where B finished. So if you plot the points perfectly, you'll find the C wave hits the 4.236 absolutely precisely, okay? So that's one thing that I liked about that count. Secondly, you can see here, there's falling volume throughout the pattern. So this B wave triangle, if we just pull on volume a moment. So this is our volume. You can see the steady falling volume throughout the pattern. up until the breakout where the high volume comes in. So that's another thing. Now, just to elaborate on the pitchfork, of all the pitchforks that I could use for this price action going up here, this pitchfork by far held price the best. You can see once we had our first pivot, second pivot, and third pivot price, where did it come up to? It comes up to your median line very nicely, then consolidates. Then it goes up to your upper median line, consolidates, test of the median line, before then moving up, where does it go to? The upper warning line, clearly respecting this pitchfork. How was this pitchfork drawn? It was using first pivot, second pivot, third pivot, and the way the third pivot was created was using this, this price action as a B wave ascending triangle, which basically gives me further, gives that B wave further credibility that it is the correct count. Obviously the alternative scenario is that this is a, a wave one, a wave two, 
and then this is some kind of wave three and this is a four and we're going to see a fifth as i say I, that is not my count based on the way that this price action is all fitting into this pitchfork the fib levels being respected but more importantly the fact that looking across the top 15 crypto which we, we do in my group on a weekly basis it throughout 2019 they've all been following this corrective sequence of a b c here on bitcoin because the c wave is so extended everyone was thinking has to be bullish it has to be bullish because the c wave is so extended relative to the a wave or if you're bullish you're looking at it as a, a wave three relative to a wave one um but you can get these uh extended zigzags where the c wave can be a 4.236 of wave a okay it's a valid count and um yeah across crypto you know you don't see this elaborate elaborative extended c wave is we see this abc count over quite a lot of coins but it's on most of the coins it's around a one-to-one -one relationship between a and c and then it rolls over okay so yeah that's me done explaining this as a corrective sequence and that it's all part of a larger wave four now for this to be part of an ascending triangle as, as I say, this is our A wave complete. We're going into B wave. And as I say, I'm expecting a double zigzag. So A, B, C, a correction in the form of W, X, Y to here. And then I expect another A, B, C to the upside to test 20K once more, okay? So coming up to around this level. And um, typically with your double zigzags, triple zigzags, they generally follow a channel. Now, if they're gonna follow a channel, I would want this lower warning line to hold really and you can see we have already breached it once and we're actually breaching it again now okay just go on the take off volume so already as i say we've breached this lower warning i was disappointed to see that breach and then we kind of got saved with this high volume candle uh, to the upside and but then we've come back down again out of this lower warning line for me this is showing weakness for this channel to the upside um, <clears throat> that said, if we go on the weekly time frame, it's misleading because you do get slight distortion of the pitchfork, but the pitchfork is actually just about holding price action. We've never seen really any significant close on the weekly time frame outside of the, the warning lines of the pitchfork. So it is just about holding. And that's why I say it needs to start going up at this moment in time if this is all going to be considered one big channel going up to form our ascending triangle up to around 20k it needs to start moving now um, so we'll zoom in and i'll explain why i feel there's further reasons why it needs to start moving at this moment in time so let's just clean this up a little bit take that off um, zoom in on the daily okay now what i think we can do we can start focusing on this price action coming down so let's go on the four hourly even So I've been, obviously we've all been looking at this as a, we've got our move up here, we're corrected and everyone's been looking at this as a corrective sequence, looking like it's gonna push higher. Uh, we saw a lot of volume come in here on this, on this move here, which was a bit of a savior for Bitcoin, but now we're, we're starting to come down and it's, I mean, people are calling this uh, a bull flag but I mean, bull flags can't go on forever, okay? And typically, if you follow Glenn Neely, Glenn Neely's book on Mastering Elliott Wave, you'll know, I think it's um, chapter four, figure four, he talks about similarity between waves. And um, basically, you shouldn't really have, when you're looking at adjacent waves within an impulse, you shouldn't have one wave really exceeding another wave by more than a three to one ratio, and that's looking at it from a time and price point of view, okay? Now, if we just go on the 15 minute to look at how long this correction has lasted, let's not forget the move up started here. So look at the comparison. This is the correction of this move up, apparently, okay? This is what everyone's saying. This is some kind of uh, bull flag that's forming. For me, it's going on way too long, okay? If we just use our fib time, so that's our the beginning of the move, finished here. This is fib time. So 
we have gone way beyond the 6.84 relationship, okay? And what I was saying, adjacent waves should really have around um, a three to one, no more than a three to one relationship. Obviously, sometimes we look at the 4.236, but classically, everything should fall within, you know, less than a three to one relationship. And our three to one would be around here. It really should have started moving up here. It did, but then it started to continue with its correction downwards. It's gone, for me, this is ringing alarm bells that this is no longer a flag. This is no longer just correcting this move up. It's telling me it's a continuation of a bigger pattern. For me, it is suggesting, I'm not saying, I'm not giving up on this potential move up just yet, but it has to move up, as I say, this week. Um, because to me, this is looking like a continuation of this downtrend at the moment, in the sense that this has gone on way too long for a flag. Um, so yeah, that's the main thing I wanna talk about from that point of view. Now, another reason, so looking at this, we're testing prior, uh, this previous range here of joining out in this blue box. I spoke to my group to explain how I'll be looking if this is to go up for a move around this level and we've tested it three times now. We've got to put them, well, let's see, will it turn out to be a triple bottom? So we've bottomed out here, here and here. And even again, there's a quadruple bottom even. So. I can't see it holding. It looks like it's going to come down lower and it looks looks pretty imminent in my opinion. Um, so the other thing is obviously we've retraced 0.618 of that move up. So you can see here we've hit bang on the 0.618 at around that $8,340 where the next FIB support is around uh, $7,800. Okay, that's the 0.786 FIB. And that does actually give confluence with the bottom of this range that this blue rectangle that I've drawn. So really I would be looking for price to come down and test that. So if you're looking at Bitcoin, just looking on shorter timeframes, just simply looking at an, a move up and a move down, looking for a, a retracement bounce, um, then yeah, 0.618 failing. You'd then look at the 0.786. But as I say, alarm bells are ringing for me. I would not be jumping in. I'm not jumping in at this moment, even if it bounces from here, and I wouldn't be jumping in here either. Because for me, this has gone on way too long. Even if we see a bit of a bounce, I wouldn't be getting too excited at this moment. Um, yeah, a lot of worrying signs here for Bitcoin, uh, and it needs to start moving this week. So yeah, obviously people are talking about this as a, a falling wedge. But, and, and people are suggesting that it has to move to the upside here because it's a falling wedge, but I've got my doubts about it, I really do. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. Um, anything can happen in trading, so it's all about, it's a game of probabilities at the end of the day. Um, so a significant pitch walk that I'm monitoring is, let me just pull it up. So this pitchfork is very significant. It's been following the trend downwards here and price has been respected really nicely off the lines. So we've got our first pivot, second pivot, third pivot, and then you can see nice test of the, the lower median line, upper median line, lower median line, upper median line, again, lower median line. And now we're just kind of in no man's land. I wouldn't be going long until we get above the upper median line. That would be a very nice show of strength if it can do that. But I have my doubts. Um, as I say, for the reasons I've mentioned, this has gone on for a very long time. It's not shown any significant bounce at this point, hitting the 0.618. No new volume has come in at the 0.618 retracement. You know, we've eaten into this consolidation here. There's plenty of reasons why people could start to think about a bullish move. We've got a, a falling wedge, which seems to be at termination point. So plenty of reasons for people to jump in at this point, but it's just not happening which for me, as I say, is ringing alarm bells. Um, so if it is to move up, I, for me, I'd have to wait for it to get above this upper median line. That would be a show of strength. Reason being is it's the first time it would have done it throughout this correction. So that would be a very good show of strength. So that's what I'm looking for from a bullish perspective. Now, until it does that, I would be very concerned about this low getting taken out. Okay, as I say, the last opportunity for it to hold for me would be around 7,800, where we've got potentially a test of the median line. Okay, 
and the test of this lower this the the, the bottom of this blue block should that fail to hold that would likely get taken out very soon and would come down further um so yeah that's what i'd be looking out for so as i say for me to be bullish i'd have to see price get above the upper median line that would be and then i'd be happy for me to say that the ascending triangle is still on track now for the descending triangle i'd be looking at this so as i say it would be like that for the upper border of the triangle we can't say where the lower border of the triangle is because the c wave hasn't finished but if we just use this trend line here using this low and this low here um, potentially it could come around to around 5500 around this point here then we go up to make so just to label the whole thing a b c d and e um, yeah so a bounce here easing into this range here as i say maybe a little bit of a wick below to catch a lot of people out because obviously everyone's got the stops just below that point and um and yeah that would be our c then we see our d and e to progress higher should that fail to hold should we see a dramatic sell-off beneath 5800 then the bearish scenario comes into play and we are looking at the following scenario so We'd be looking at this is a W, this is X, and then Y to around 2200, as I mentioned previously. So X is here. Um, so, yeah, they're the three scenarios. And this is why I say we're at a pivotal point. This blue block here is what I was looking for to support price action. It's failing to hold it at the top of the block. Even at the bottom of the block, I would be a little bit skeptical. And as I say, I feel like we could see a symmetrical triangle play out with us heading down to around 5,800. Should this, uh, the bottom of the blue block hold, I mean, fail to hold, then I see us potentially coming down to around test 5,800. That's the way I'm looking at it. So I hope I've made it clear. I've tried to explain everything from the beginning I mean, I'm sure by all means, you may have your arguments about my long term count. That's fine. If you if you have any queries, put it down in the comments. Very happy to discuss these things. Uh, but as I say, I've been looking at this for a long time. I'm pretty much aware of all the alternative scenarios that have been discussed from an Elliott Wave point of view. And this is by far um, the best analysis that I can give at this moment in time. As I say, I'm not pinned down to one scenario at the moment. If it's going to go up, it has to go up at this moment. And I'm having my doubts about the bullish move because of the lack of reaction here. And last saviour would be at the median line for this downward pitchfork. And yeah, I've explained everything. So going in circles a little bit here. If you've got any queries, as I say, put it down in the comments in, in the video. And um, yeah, if you want to hear more, more from... Um, my analysis obviously we've got the cryptology group you can check it out at wave618.com links to the website are in the description where i cover the top 15 cryptos uh, market cap cryptos and we're starting to just have a little bit more of a look at forex pairs as well as well as the dow jones which is showing strength right now and so which probably will suggest a lot of us stocks are heading upwards also um, so ultimately from a fundamental point of view you know, seeing a correction completion in Bitcoin, at a, you know, coinciding with the US election around uh, November 2020, that is where we might see stocks also top out and we could see money flood then into crypto, okay? Where we could then call this one major accumulation zone, uh, allowing for that move to the upside in a major wave five. So it kind of, that is, there is a, a fundamental perspective to suggest why this is all playing out as a, a major way for also so yeah i think we're going to wrap it up there guys if you found value in today's content then leave a like and yeah i think we'll wrap it up until next time all right take care guys